In this screencast, we're going to take a look at Android Options menus. So we'll take a look at how we hook up the Options menus, and we'll look at a couple of different approaches. One approach um, we'll look at is how we can bind the actions to the menu items up front, and then we'll look at a second approach where we can sort of defer what we want um, to take place till the menu item is actually clicked. So I'm going to create a new project and let's um, add a couple of activities. So we'll, we'll have this first one be the main activity and then I'm going to add one more activity and And let's give another layout for this one. So we'll go with we'll just do this real easy. All right, so one more thing, just make sure this guy here. All right, so what we want to do is just have a um, menu come up, and we want to have the ability to have the menu invoke another activity. All right, so I've got two activities. One of them is going to start. I'm going to assign the menu to that one. And when I uh, select it, it's going to go and start it. So to create, an, there's, there's a couple of different ways we can approach these. Um, let's take the easy way first. So we can override the uh, uncreate options menu method defined in the activity base class and what we can do here is populate the options menu with detailed menu items that we want and one of the ways we can do this is we can take the menu object which is the handle to the actual menu that's going to appear in the menu button and we can add to it um, new options and one of the things we can do is so I'll just call this activity 2 <laughs> very descriptive and I can do chaining here and I can set a bunch of things on here for example I can say this is the intent that I want you to run when that menu item is selected. So at this point I can say new intent and I can specify the class. So the one I wanted to run. So now I've got an explicit intent here. Okay, so this says run this particular activity when they pick the option activity 2. Um, And let's just for fun do one more here. Yep, that wasn't good. And here we'll say, okay, that's good. So then we can add one more item here.
Okay, so now I've got a menu with two items on it. Let's go ahead and run that. Up, yep, thank you. All right, so here's my activity. It's running, so now we're on my activity. When I hit the menu button, it pops up the options that I just put. And if I pick activity two, it goes to another activity. And remember the concept of the activity stack now. So my other activity is kind of pushed on the stack, and now I've got this other one in the foreground. If I back button, I'm gonna be right back in there. If I go to activity three, okay, yet another activity. And if I hit the menu here, notice nothing happens because that activity doesn't have an options menu associated with it. Okay, so that's one way I can I can do menus. And there's one other little detail I wanted to show you. Um, if we go back to the code here where I created these, I want to set icons on these. Okay, so in your homework you're going to be doing menus too, but you want to set a nice icon on this to kind of visualize what it is you're going to do. So we have a method set icon and then you just give it a drawable. Where does it get the drawable? Well that's what we have resources for. So one of the things you'll want to do is go out and get your icon menus and I've put a link um, to this uh, Okay, and this tool I showed you a few weeks ago, um, but it's got a lot of nice stuff on it. You can actually upload images and it will create menu icons and it creates the whole set of icons for you, the LDI, MDI, and so forth. So let's go ahead and pick something from Clipart and I don't know, we'll just pick, uh, we'll pick this one. And since I picked menu icons, what I can do, notice what it's gonna do here. It's gonna give me all the sizes I need. So I'm going to download that and let me give this an example. So we'll call this another activity. And so that's another and then we'll call second set yet another and we'll pick a different icon. I don't know. How about that one? And when I download that one, okay, so I've got these sets, and if I go to my file system, they went to documents, and so I had so I have this one, another activity, and yet another. So if I unpack these, they give me this complete set. So I can just take these here, and drag them into Eclipse. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. So just drag them to my resource directory. And now when I go here, uh, there's my another activity. So I'm actually giving it that icon. And I can do the same thing over here. Oops, sorry. I want to chain these methods, right? We'll do the same thing here. So we'll say set. And then I need to go back to here. 
and this was yet another drag those in okay now if we run Okay, so somehow it didn't rebuild everything the last time. So we've got our images. So that's one approach to doing these menus, and this is really quick and easy. So if you've got a bunch of activities and you want to hook them up on your um, menus, you can just do it in that fashion. But another, um, another approach is as follows. Um, if I wanted to um, just populate the items, the markers in the menus, and then actually determine, like get an event when the click is, when the, when the menu click happens, and then determine where I'm going to go and what I'm going to do, which may be the case in certain situations, I can actually break this up. So instead of um, adding these intents, what I'm going to do is just terminate right here. And then I'll leave this line in here so when I distribute this code, you guys can have both. Sorry. So we'll turn this one off. So now what we're going to do is we're just saying, okay, these are what we want in the menu, but what we want to do is write an event handler so when one of these items get picked, then we'll actually get the event and we'll decide at that point what we're going to have happen. And what we need to do to accomplish this, so that sets up the menu, what we can do is override. And there should be an on options menu item selected right here. And what happens is, oh shoot. When these events happen, we're going to end up right in here. So what we can do now is just put a switch statement in here and multiplex on these different items that are getting selected, and then we can decide at that point. So if I put a switch in here, I can actually switch on item, and then I can say get item ID, and that's the um, uh, item value. So I want to, you know, I'm going to have to do this slightly different. So I'm going to leave all this in here and then just recopy because I have to set those IDs which is what I forgot. So we'll go like this. So that's the original code. And then I'll comment it out. And what we can do is add these items and there's a different version of this we can use this so for group ID right now we're just gonna put zero in there and for this one let's put And then we put a semicolon here. We delete this. And we have to set those constants.
and then we can check which ones we've got here. And I could just go ahead and start them the same way. So I could say All right. <laughs> okay, so now I've actually deferred the actual action till the event happens. Now one of the things where you might want to do this is you'll notice in this previous code that I've commented out here, it's going to run under the hood here, start activity. It's not going to call start activity for resolve. Okay? So if you wanted to call something and actually get a result back, right, then you're going to want to use the second method I had, and then you could override on this activity class the on result like we did previously. So now I can actually have an activity run from a menu and actually return me, to me some value. Okay. Or if there was some state information, some state information within that activity that kind of determines what you're going to do when that event happens, then you're going to want to use the second approach. Okay. So basically two approaches. One is you kind of tie a priori the action you want to happen to the menu button kind of at init time. The second approach lets you defer the decision until the actual button click arrives. So let's just run this and prove that it works. Okay. Mm -hmm. 